<laughs> oh come on, I said one v one, bro. Not like this. Oh come on. guys welcome and welcome back to my channel so today's video is i'm gonna show you what doom's capability part 2 one of the topic on this video is what is the difference between core 1 and core 2 how can be utilized and how it useful it is we all know or often of us that doom is one of the defensive support and it's very slow and easy target with any kind of mecha doom is not good when it comes to chase scenario and you can do nothing about it until your opponent walk away and disappear from your sight due to its lack of speed. Doom has so many weaknesses just like the other mechs how they are made. But Doom has also many ways to be strong just like any other mech as well. You will know Doom's weakness once you see how strong he really is and how he capable is when it comes into serious battle. And before we start guys I just need a little help with yours. If you are interested in this video, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button on the screen, and thanks for helping me out. Here is the first on our list, is Core 1. And as the description on this module, undeployed backside button turret can automatically attack nearby targets. But it doesn't say how far and how it works. Let's go and start it. This is the example damage of turret when hitting a mech. Each turret is 68 on example as we can see, and if you drop all of them properly, you will get 204 if you calculate the sum, plus the backside button turret as well. Take a good look the distance between the backside turrets from you, with only about 62 meter range up to your opponent. Just remember the automatic shooting turret attack that when you want to carry out this. You have to aim the mech inside the square box as you notice. The backside turret will shoot or it work only on mecha and not on any pilot. The maximum range to clarify on this matter is around 68 meter approximately up to your opponent. My suggestion in this type of core is not to remember the exact number when you try to perform this, but instead, your estimating nor calculation gameplay would be probably better. Here's the best part. When the turret back is empty, it is easy to notice there is not shooting even a single beam. But take a good look when it's turret damage while all the turrets returning one by one. As a damage example is around 60 per hit and multiply by 3. When the turret is properly placed, and your backside turret is already cooled down, they will receive greater damage than the core 2 can provide. Unemployed turret is 60 each per hit, as the equivalent of 180. Then deployed turret is around 68 per hit, and has the equivalent of 204, we will get 384, as we sum for the deployed and undeployed turret. Not bad, isn't it? And now here is the bad thing. Most or often happen when you face a real player and there is a random bot nearby, it could be turned out like this. The turret could go crazy as freely as he wanted. On the other hand is our competitive core 2 module and it says deployed button turret can link with another launch more power cluster beams. This is an example through damage of 3 well deployed turret on core 2 module. And if they are connected to each other, you will get 265 damage per hit as an example. You just make sure to drop the turret accordingly with on his yellow circle marking when you are in the state of dropping them. You can drop the turret in any form as long as you want and as long as they are connected to each other. You will get your expected damage if you are aware on barriers as not to break the connection between the three as well as yellow circle guide marks when you perform it. Before you launch the turret, the yellow circle will appear as your guide that will connect them. As I mentioned in this type of core, you can drop at any form as you like. It can be like this, this position, and this, like this. As you notice that it can change target but still can throw consistent damage as long as you can reach the range of enemy mech and even like a crazy form. 
One of the tricks on this type of core module is you can hide the two turret and show only one of the front of you while you lure them. In case you aim your turret and got destroyed, you can easily replace another one if you will. Based on my fighting experience, when my calculation of enemy perform a close combat, I drop this on my back and cover it together with my shield. It is often ignored because it's a single turret in their eye. Plus, your map experience skill is a big advantage when you perform this, knowing where is the best place to lure the enemy on your turf. Here's an example of what it looks like when you lure your opponent with or without core. Plus with your gameplay experience is also a big help of yours and you can create more tension with unmech tactics if you want. Now how about the shield of doom light? The shield that doom has is one of the most annoying parts of him. For those who use Doom Knight Mecha, when you are performing this skill, the only one thing you should do is not to go somewhere else or don't leave the shield you've already cast because that is your temporary turf. Here's some example not leaving your shield and how to play it alone. No matter what happens, don't leave your shield next to you. We know that it always depends on situation but your first option is not to leave next to it and feel what will happen if you really should leave your shield or not and initiate option 2. You can do this trick either when you're dwelling with pilot form or even fighting a mech. Here's an example of one of the best ways to use the ability that Doomlight has. Drop your shield and your turret and play along with by doing back and forth of the both side of your shield. The weakness it has is that you lean towards on the angle or on the both side of it. Doomlight will force to levitate to distract the opponent's focus. Doomlight will make sure he press the reload while he increases his altitude and relocate his turret that can still reach the opponent. Your enemy will be in the state of thinking. Which one is the best thing to do? The user that has cast the shield but he cannot go a direct damage or the turret consuming his HP. The moment makes more you think is if you need to go in the pilot form or just let the mech explode and drop nearby doom and go all out with your anti-mech weapon. With help of your turret, push them to think what to do and make them feel confused. Destroy their momentum and see themselves that nowhere else to go. Your opponent sure thing not to ignore your turret you place and your shield is important to drag them near you while you're consuming their HP. Here's also an example performing all the skills of Doomlight that can turns out the opponent thinks that facing a Doomlight is not easy as they please. Do the primary weapon, let them close to you, drop your shield, reload if you plan to increase your altitude, and rearrange the turrets. And when you reach the ground, you are already reloaded and do this like a loop. It will now depends on your accuracy, your talent skills, nor your fighting experience as well. Fighting a mech in a pilot form is one of the risky tactics. You may take some HP of your opponent and he may take yours too. The moment you perform this, your mecha should be ready to call right away because maybe your opponent is preparing to come out with his mech as well. It is better to fight with someone when you are in a mech mode because your mecha life will only play a half of HP or more than that due to the fact that your mecha is in a state of respawning and it's being shot for free. This is how play along with your shield and not living along with your turrets. And this is how it looks like when you're forcing him to get close to you. And also, he's not paying attention to his mecha HP which is decreasing badly. And here's some clip how Doomlight will chase with the opponent having no choice but to get off the mech and run. Here's also an example how it looks like against Omega together with his pilot. By not leaving with your shield is indeed efficient nor effective. Let's move forward to the another topic. When the event is Doom to Doom, knowing the capability of Doom Light, only the talent of the pilot will prevail in this matter. If you are fighting one-on-one -on -one with this mech, do not enter his turf without observation and if everything is not ready to exchange talents. If your opponent is at least 20 meters from you or it's just a couple of steps, you need to nullify his shield 
and creates attention to distract his aiming momentum. Will Korwan can win against Kortu or Kortu can win over him? But if Doom is around more than 70 meter, you need to play stop and go. You go beside him while dropping Thoret near him little by little while you shoot the primary weapon as well. When your primary weapon is about to reload, you do the stop and you drop your shield while reloading until you get close to each other and apply the close range battle. The more you get close, the more tension you create and tension can create confusion. On additional, rocket propulsion is only for dodge nor distracting his accuracy and to reload your primary weapon as well. Don't waste using the rocket propulsion while you're using primary weapon. The only thing will happen is when you get on the ground only dropping your shield, doing nothing and watching your opponent while reloading. You apply those skill only if the enemy mech is about to explode. While you decrease your altitude, don't do the reload because it can cause a delay while you chase the pilot from the mech you destroyed. Only when you are sure where is the pilot will drop, then do the reload near him. Here's an example of fight scene with a good player using the light. You must be aware of his moves of what he will cast before you act. As I said earlier, pilot's talent will win on this match. His first move is you drop the shield and your response on that move is not to copy what he's doing. But since I already used some of my juice to level the I drop my shield to cool down which means I am on the state of resetting my pattern. Since I used all of it, I need to leave my shield and go to a place that he can see me and do the reload. Now if everything is already up, you are now ready to initiate the rotation of skills pattern. As you notice he's moving backward to reset his fighting movements also, both of us is on the state of preparing on 1v1 and because he knows that my only option to go forward since he's not ready, we grab the opportunity to make everything ready. If some of your ability is needed to cool it down, we must hide or get covered like what we do each other. Take a good look while we hide. I know both of us is making a micro tactics to drain our HP mecha. If some of each uh, see a little hole in this battle, it will switch to continuously look Doom's ability. When you see the hole, it is your call to pull the trigger. Now here's the summary between those two, it's a little bit tricky. When Korwan is far enough to reach the enemy, it will stop shooting them. And if you try to stop this to drop more Thoret, the backside undeployed Thoret will take less damage. And it's cause you delay. Instead of dropping the Thoret, perform shooting your primary weapon with the help of reloaded backside Thoret. I think it is a more better way and easy on that. Same goes on the core too as well. But the good thing on this module is you can replace another one to reach the enemy with only single drop and make sure they are still Still connected. If the both core are on their feet and you think it's already useless to drop more, it is much better you focus on shooting with your primary weapon. Battle experience can help with any scenario. For me, don't chase, hide, and then repair while all of your skill is cooled down and see what else can happen. Do you believe on that will be able to imprint the name of the Doom of your opponent and also your pilot's name as well? Nor will Doom can be their nightmare when it comes on support role. It may yes or maybe not. Is he will your favorite mecha in the future? Who knows? Once again guys, hope this video helps to those want to use Doom Light and to those need some tips nor tricks. And if there is some details that I forgot to mention in this video, please, I'm looking forward to see you in the comment section below. Till next time guys, adios and out. Bro, move. I'm doing something bro. What is this guy doing? Nascling. Hey, bye, move. Oh, come on, he's still there. Oh, never mind. I'll go on the other side. Baka. Now. Ewan ko na lang kung sumunod ka pa. Nanda? Nani?